اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session, we are going to talk about data analysis and results section when analysis is done in smart PLS. Now, although I've got a complete series on the channel and that focuses on smart PLS and how to report the results, I guess it's very important to discuss the format and structure of the results in a data analysis and results section in a research paper. So I thought I'll do a small video on it. Now, I've got a few papers of mine here as to how I report the results. Now, what happens is in each of these papers, you might see slightly different formats. But overall, what I have discussed here or I've put in here, you will see in all those papers. I'll share the links of the papers as well. Now, whenever you are doing your data analysis and results section, the first or I've, I've given it these different steps. Now, in order to perform these steps, obviously there are tutorials available on the channel and the videos ac accompanying each of these steps or each of these analysis techniques will be shared in the description of this video. So the first thing that you do when you are writing data analysis and results section is you write the brief introduction of the techniques and a structural equation modeling that how you are using. You do not need to describe a CM you do not need to explain it in much detail. So how I do it, I've done it in a few papers here. So data analysis and procedure. So here you explain the analysis procedure you are using and SCM as divided into two different models, measurement model and structural model. So what does measurement model do and what does structural model do? So you briefly explain your data analysis tool and then the procedures involved. Now, sometimes you might not find it in the papers. Now, it is here as well. It is here as well. And it is mentioned in this paper. No, or not in this paper, but in other papers as well. Now, sometimes you do not see it because maybe the reviewer hasn't asked for it. And maybe we are fighting against the number of words. So in order to counter that problem of number of words, we try to squeeze in or limit the information and provide in the most important details. Now, what if the reviewer asks for it and you are short of words? Well, then you cut down the words in other places. Now, I do plan to do a video on how to cut down the words. So the first step, done brief introduction of techniques and scm and i will, will share these papers so that you can see how i have how i have done it now step two although in most papers i don't report it but sometimes the reviewers may ask for a data screening and cleaning so how did you screen the data how did you clean the data the whole process can be described in just four or five lines or one simple small paragraph there is a whole video on data screening and cleaning process and i'll share that as well so what you need to do is you simply need to write what steps did you do. So you checked for the frequency so that you know that the, the minimum and maximum or the data is in range. You checked for skewness and kurtosis so that there are no extreme or there is no extreme violations of normality. You checked for outliers so maybe through standardized values or through box plots. You assessed the common method bias through VIF values or through Harman single factor test or any other method as well. You just describe them. This is what you did and this is what you found. I hope that when you are doing it, you do not face any issue. But if you do, you have to explain how did you clean the data in that case. If you had some issues, how or what did you do? Now, once you are done with these two steps, the next step is, and this can come in a separate heading as well, or maybe added as part of the, your existing text, just like this here. It can be part of this data analysis and procedure paragraph. So you explain the tool, then you write how did you screen and clean the data, then you write about your SCM. Now, once you are done with this, the next step is measurement model. Now, measurement model 
Now, SCM is actually divided into two sub-models, the measurement model assessment and the structural model assessment. Measurement model assessment is all about quality criteria. How good are your constructs? So as part of measurement model assessment, and if your measurement model or all the constructs are reflective, so we are going to report. The first thing that we do is report item loadings. And let's say this is my model. Now in this model, I've got two higher order constructs. Here they are. This is a higher order construct and this is a higher order construct. Now irrespective of whether the, the constructs or the model that I am testing has higher order constructs or not, the first step is put in all your lower order constructs, go for calculation, PLS SCM algorithm, run it, and you will have your item loadings and all the other statistics. Now here it is, outer loadings. Now here are your outer loadings. Now you need to format them obviously when you are putting it in your results, copy to Excel and here you can format them accordingly. Now, how do you format them? So for example, this assurance is my mediator. So I need to put it after my independent variable. So where is my independent variable? Development, rewards, vision. These are the three sub dimensions of my IV. So they should be at the start of it, like here as well and here as well. So you need to order your uh, columns. Now, other way around is, but that won't work with this unless or until you give these items numbers as well. I've got a video on that. So you, if you give these constructs numbers like one, then full stop vision, then two full stop development. So the columns will be ordered. Now, moving on, once you've got the outer loadings, you can put in the variance inflation factors. But normally what we do is the variance inflation factor is for the formative construct. It's normally higher for reflective construct. But in some papers, you will see that it is reported for reflective constructs as well. So where is your VIF? Here it is. Open report again. And on the left side, you've got collinearity diagnostics or VIF. Here it is. Now, this is normally less than five. That is uh, the threshold. Now the next step, construct reliability. So where is your construct reliability? Here it is, construct reliability. These three, construct reliability through alpha, composite reliability A and composite reliability C. And this is your convergent validity, the next part. Here it is, convergent validity as part of construct validity. Now how do you report it? Very simple, you create one single table like this maybe like this here. There it is. I've got three cultures here uh, from which I collected the data, so it's slightly different. Let me open another paper. Here it is. So based on loadings for the constructs, then the alpha, the CR and AV, you create just one single table and you put the details like this in the text. And there are other examples as well. Like this measurement model assessment. Here it is. The reliability, the validity, and both forms of validities, uh, validities convergent and discriminant validity, validities are here. And just make sure that you refer the tables in the text as well. And use references wherever you are using thresholds. Now this paper, the reference will be shared in the description as well. Now, once you have done or once you are done with convergent validity, then you've got discriminant validity. So where is discriminant validity? Here it is. Now, normally there are three, but we normally report HTMT and Fornal and Nakar. And how do we do it? Here it is. This is Fornal and Nakar criterion. In this paper, we did not report HTMT, I guess. So let's look at the other paper. Here it is, Fornal and Locker, HTMT. So this is how you can report it and then refer to it in the text like this here. Fornal and Locker discriminant validity was assessed by comparison of the correlations and then HTMT with its threshold. Now, once this is done, now 
what if you have higher order constructs just like I have in my study here? So I've got higher order construct. Now this is a higher order construct. This is a higher order construct. These others are lower order constructs. Now what do we do? This is reflective formative and this is reflective reflective. Now what if I've got both or maybe one? So the first thing is, let's say I've got reflective reflective higher order construct. Now again, for reflective reflective, the process does not change. You will still have to report the loadings, the reliability and validity. Yes the same things that you have done here. But you can do in a more summarized manner here. Just maybe one paragraph and put all these other details in one or two tables. That's about it. Summarize it. Do not go for much more detail when you are doing higher order construct validity because we are short of the words limit actually. We've, we've got 8,000, 7,000, maybe 9,000 words. So again, we have to limit ourselves. Now, what if I've got reflective formative higher order construct? We do not report the reliability or just the way we are reporting reflective constructs. We do not report the validity for reflective formative higher order construct. So what we do is we report the variance inflation factor, outer weights and outer loadings. Now where are these? So here is my measurement model for higher order construct. So this is my higher order formative, higher order reflective. Now, how do we get these? All these videos are available on the channel. I'll share the whole playlist so that you can watch them later. So let's say reflective formative. Here it is. So first step is go for VIF. Now, I did run PLS SCM algorithm. So let's say I want to report this ISQ. So again, I will go for outer loadings. Now, I'm not interested in these outer loadings. I'm not interested in these as well. I'm just interested in this one. Assurance reliability, responsiveness, and empathy. These four, that's it, these ones. So I'm going to just report this part of the table. That's it, Not neither this one as well, development, just these three and this one. Again, for reliability and validity, I'm just going to report this one, that's it. Because all others are reported and I do not want to report them again and again. So you can do this in just one single table, similarly for discriminant validity. Again, I'm interested in the relationship of ISQ with others. So here it is, this one and this one. So you can put that in one single table. Now, reflective formative. Again, the first step is VIF. Where is VIF? Here it is. So I'm not interested in all of them. I'm just interested in reflective formative. So this one, this one, and this one, that's it. And then once I'm, I'm done with this, where are my outer weights? Again, go to bootstrapping. Normally 5,000 to 10,000 is recommended, but for now I'm just going to go for 500. So quickly run the model, faster bias corrected one tail and all good, that's it. And I've got a sample here, which I'm going to show you just now. Here it is, validating higher order construct USR. So you report the VIF values, then you report the load, uh, the outer weights, then you report the loadings, the detailed videos are in the playlist so you can watch those as to how to perform the higher order construct validation and then how do you report it here it is see one single table vif outer weights t statistics p values outer loadings p values that's about it now this study was done in three cultures or rather two cultures and then the complete data set so for each sample the results are reported so where are your outer weights here are your outer weights. Here it is. I'm not interested in all of them. I'm just interested in my higher order formative construct. So this one, this one, and this one. Here, yeah, that's it. And where are my outer loadings? Here they are. Again, just this one, this one, and this one. That's it. I'm not interested in all of them. So I'm just going to report what I am interested in. Now, once this is done, this is your measurement model assessment. Once this is done, this is very basic that normally is followed in research papers. Now, there are other statistics as well, depending on the objectives of your study. So what are the, or what is the structural model? Here, I'm interested in testing my hypothesis. So how do I do this? Again, let's say this is my model and I've already run bootstrapping. So again, bootstrapping for structural model analysis. Let's do it again, start. 
So in this case, I've got mediators as well, but I do not have any moderators. But what if I have had moderators? But again, first thing, path coefficient, direct relationships. So the direct relationships are here. We normally report original sample, standard deviation, t-statistics, p-values, and how to report it. There are videos on the channel. It's just that you copy this table into Excel and format it there. Now, the next step, moderation analysis, if you have performed it. And you will see moderation analysis results here. Let me quickly do it. And let's say, here it is. Let's say here it is. Let's say I've got two moderators. Calculate, bootstrapping, again, start. Path coefficients. And here are your results for your moderation analysis. Now, if you've performed it, you report it. How to report it? Please refer to the playlist. Mediation analysis. So where are your mediation results? Specific indirect effects. Here are your mediation results. And where is your predictive relevance? Sorry for the typo. So explanatory power and F square. So come here. Go back. Calculate. Where is predictive relevance? Click PLS predict CVPAT. Press start. LV prediction summary, here are your Q-square values, all greater than zero. This means that the predictors are relevant in predicting the outcome. Go back. So where are my R-square and F-square? So let's uh, do that. Calculate. Let's do PLS SCM algorithm. Start. The ones in these circles, these values are your R square values here. No R square value for this, obviously, because this is an exogenous variable or an independent variable. No variable is influencing it. Where is your F square? Here is your F square. These are F square values, very weak F square values, quite strong F square values, weak and moderate F square values. R square. Here are your R square values. So this is how you can, or rather, this is the whole structure for reporting your data analysis and results using Smart PLS. I'll share the, the, the references of these papers that I have published and used Smart PLS to report or perform my analysis. Thank you very much.